we just gotta make sure that the audio spikes are going and we are good um, this is the live free podcast I think we are on week five <laughs> I don't know uh, but here with me is uh, Dylan Van Howen he is the brother to Jared Van Howen who I have worked with numerous times for many things uh, he's uh, Jared is the co-head of Barking Bands. Dylan is his younger brother. Dylan is the latest member of Live Free. Uh, he is, he was in Infinite, and now he's going to be in I Give It a Year. He's both acting in it as the main character, and he's being a producer. Um, I think that's a pretty solid introduction. Uh, so your big thing that you're really into is props. Can you explain how you kind of got into those? Um, so I actually... What really got me going was uh, on iFunny. I saw like this guy, this guy Gary Fay, who had made his, who had uh, made like articulated fingers, and I was like, "Hey, I want to make those." So I decided that I was gonna try to make my own designs and stuff like that. And then when you asked me if I wanted to be in a movie, that just like kind of like shot up, shot it off with me. So this is fairly new. You yeah, going relatively, yeah. I okay. mean, I've always had a tendency to make stuff, but nothing of like this sort. It's usually just like mostly stuff on like video games, like Minecraft and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Well, it definitely appears like it turned out pretty good. I'm definitely impressed. I can't believe that you made one that was 3D printed, and now you're scanning. You know, and you sent me that uh, Snapchat like probably about two weeks ago, now you're standing with one that you made basically out of nothing <laughs> for and, yeah. extremely cheap. And this was, this was, I built this before I built. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I built this like a week before I even started that idea. Oh, I don't think you ever sent me a picture of that one. This one? Yeah, not until after that. It's 3D printed one. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, um, I guess this is a podcast. Because that, that was more, but that was... That was more exciting for me because I've never I've never 3D printed anything ever. Oh, okay. And this wasn't anything <clears throat> new. I've made stuff out of cardboard before, like I've made buildings and stuff. Oh, damn. So. Yeah. See, um, uh, I I I just kind of realized we're in, on a podcast, so people can't really see what we're talking about. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we'll 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 post we'll we'll use out here. I'll take the picture right now of you holding that, and that'll be the post the picture that we use for the post for the video of the podcast. The video that's not actually a video, that's actually audio. Um, so let me get that. I like it. <laughs> and you approve? Yeah. All right, perfect. <laughs> so what Dylan is discussing is what you are seeing in the picture, if you are looking at the picture while you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> um, it is uh, a mechanical whole, whole, whole ass hand that <laughs> has a working thumb. A working pinky finger, a working ring finger. It's all got all five fingers. A working middle finger and a working pointer finger. Each in, with each <laughs> being able to be controlled individually. Yeah, each finger can individually move. And how he does this is he puts his actual fingers in these uh, little rings connect in the rings are connected to the string <laughs> that run through uh, tubes up the fingers and at the end of the finger it's tied in a knot and then tied around the tip of the finger. Which so forces the finger what, what, that way when I pull it, it goes through it and it actually contracts pulls it. the finger yeah. in your direction. That is insane. I don't. And how? This might sound really stupid. How old are you? <laughs> uh, fifteen. Oh my God! You are only fifteen. Yeah. And you're already thinking of that stuff. When I was fifteen, um, I think the furthest we got was we made James Bond and Batman fight. <laughs> I don't think we came up with nearly that much inventive stuff. I know that uh, when I was 15 we worked on Timeline, uh, which was a remake of something that I had made when I was 13, and there was a uh, hardcore, like, a few fight scenes and some parts where we put blood on my face, but we never came up with nearly anything that inventive. To give you an idea, when I was 15 and we made Timeline, there was a point where I was like, oh, I need this remote that we can use as a time travel remote, and I ended up taking apart a pocket knife to use as a time travel remote. <laughs> Instead of a TV remote. <laughs> yeah, or anything <laughs> of the sort, because uh, I don't have the, I, I can come up with the story and I can, you know, see the visuals and I can, you know, I'll force myself to act, but I cannot come up with the special effects work. 
And uh, I can definitely tell you are related to Jared, because Jared can come up with some pretty crazy stuff, too. And this is just absolutely insane. Like I said, I'm impressed by so it. So what's Jared come up with? Jared, when, I know he does, like, masks. <clears throat> yeah, he does a lot of masks. Um, I know that Jared, he doesn't do as many technical effects as you do. Jared's more of, uh, he, when, when it comes to fighting, fighting scenes and, like, the bloody scenes, he's more about the technicality of where the blood goes and where the camera should be when the person gets into a fight. Oh, like, if he, you get, like, if you... Uh, yeah, I have a leg of bleeding lip and you get punched, the blood should go flying. Yeah, that way. Yep. Okay. Jared's very much in that realm, but Jared also is very good with, uh, like, oh, we want this guy picked up off the ground by, you know, the bad guy or whatever, and we want him thrown into the fridge. Jared will, you know, he his mind is just so wired to be like, pillows, you know, what's in, what's in the room? Find and, a mattress. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, literally, he'll be like, mattress, and... It's like uh, okay, did you guys I use didn't that even... to like jump off the garage one time. Yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> we were when we were fourteen. We were making this thing called the Happy Mur this web series called the Happy Murder Spree, and we put a mattress under your guys' garage. I think you might have been outside. I was. I was. <laughs> I got up on the roof, but oh, I didn't did do you? anything. Yeah, Jared jumped from the roof. If I remember right, or he like act, acted like he fell and he landed on the mattress. That was uh, worrisome. <laughs> <laughs> And then we blew up uh, Legos in your garage. I don't know if you remember that. that. That was for James Bond versus Batman. Uh, we see we needed Batman's mansion to blow up, and <laughs> so we built it out of Legos. Yeah, we built. We took some Legos and we built a nice little Lego mansion. We put firecrackers in the Legos and blew them up, and opened the garage door real I got quick. Shit, of fireworks in my room right now. Yeah, yep. And that's. I think that's why we ended up doing it that way because Jared was like, "We have an overabundance of fireworks." <clears throat> Um, so, with with your props, where do you want to go? Do you want to just do it as a hobby, or do you want to actually kind of do it as a career? Um, I, I used to, like, want to be, like, I, I, first I went from engineer, then I realized that I don't want to, like, be the one that comes up with stuff. I want to be the ones that, I want to be the one that just builds some stuff. So, kind of like the blueprint I want to be stage, or what? right after the blueprint phase. Or, yeah, I kind of wanted to be, like, more or less a construction worker. Oh, okay, okay. Or, like, buildings and stuff. And then I got, it was, like... No, because then I have to go. College. I have to go to college here, go there. Yeah, I guess. And I, I don't, we, I don't know if we have the money for that. Yeah, no, my I get mom that. insists that I go to college. Of like, I'm not paying a dime for it if I don't want to go. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at with college too. Because I didn't, I did not want to live a life full of debt. And that's no disrespect to anyone that does want to go to college. I'm not telling you that you should not, but I just, I definitely understand your mind. Yeah, I don't want to be in debt. And I didn't want to uh, deal with. I didn't want to be a place I didn't like. I I I wasn't gonna pay anything if if I had to. If I had to go to college, I wasn't paying. Yeah. Yep. So, and then, but then I just decided that like actually, um, I know I noticed that I was a pretty decent drawer. Like when it came to this, like. We had a, a while ago, like eighth, seventh grade, we had a project where we had to draw a world map and do like some type of weather thing. And I literally looked at a picture <coughs> online. I I looked at it and then closed my computer. And I just drew the whole world. Oh, like, like just kind of, all this big thing. Kind of memorized it. I literally memorized it. And when I opened the computer back up to see how much I I missed, like maybe one or two countries of how they how they were shaped. That so was do it. you have a photographic memory? It, at times, yes. Yeah, but other times, no. At. It kind of depends. It depends on the importance. I've noticed Jared is very good with memory when it comes to video games, but when it comes to anything else, basically, he sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, it's pretty bad. Like, uh, one time we were playing a video game, and he was like, no, it's red, blue, yellow, orange, green, red, yellow. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you remember that, but you don't remember... <laughs> what we had for supper last night? <laughs> like, I don't remember what I had for breakfast uh, this morning. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Um, I don't even know if I ate this morning. I might have waited until lunch. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I noticed that especially. I think I think your memory is prone to working better when it's something you find interest in. Yeah. And I think, I think you're kind of multi-talented, which I think a lot of people in this career are. Jared's very multi-talented. He could he could uh, make video games, video game video uh, gameplay for a living. He could do the blood special effects for a living. He could probably write for a living if he found the right writing team. I think if he wrote for like some crazy TV show, like Mad TV type stuff. Yeah. I think you could probably write also. Have you tried writing? 
I've tried. Oh, it was a while ago. It was a while oh. ago. I haven't tried since like fifth grade, but um, I had a, I had my own like story, and it was. I, I don't remember much much about it. I still have it on my Google account somewhere, but um. Was this around the time that Jared and I were starting to show interest? This was fourth grade, so I was like eleven, and that means no fourth grade. I was like, I was like nine, and Jared was like, Jared was Jared would be fourteen, yeah. Oh yeah, so no, that's he'd about, be thirteen. It's about right when we started doing that yeah. stuff, I believe. Yeah, you were you were uh, you were definitely there in the background the whole come up and then you actually were in the first movie that I made called Infinite. Yeah. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. I, the, I I just wanted to be like when you guys were start had started it, I just wanted to be a part of it cuz I I wanted to hang out with Jared. Yeah. And I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. So I I definitely do uh I do wish that we could have found a bigger way to fit you into Infinite, but the thing is your character was such a Kind of like a random person. Well, I see a lot of people, including Jared himself, and even the people that I was uh, surrounded by at the time when I was making it. A lot of them were like, "Why?" Like, like there, I remember there was a day when I was like, "We need Dylan today," and they were like, "Why do we need Dylan?" Like, he does his his character can be written out, and I'm like, "You're not understanding." And you know, I I kind of I felt like I had to like grab them by the hand and walk them through it, and I was like, Dylan's character is a child without the child at the heart of the story even though he dies instantly there's no heart in this story because infinite is so like infinite was just it was such a shitty world there was nothing for you to root for everybody was someone that you were more than likely going to hate you know you had me who was a bad guy jared who was a bad guy emmett who was a bad guy everybody was a bad guy and you were the only person that I think there was any validity to actually caring for. So I do think that people definitely don't acknowledge the importance of, you know, honestly, I don't even remember your character's name in Infinite. I didn't know if I had a name. Yeah, <laughs> I think you might have, but I don't think it was explicitly stated. But you you actually are in the second Infinite. Second Infinite? Yeah, your character comes back. Not to say that he didn't die, but he's definitely... Um, I didn't know. I don't know. Is it like a prequel? No, it it is a sequel. Um, It's uh, so in 2019 they came out with El Camino, which was the sequel to Breaking Bad. Oh yeah. And uh, that kind of pushed me and inspired me to write Infinite Two because I, I I always said I don't want to make Infinite Two, but I got got to thinking about it and it's like there was a lot of things that I could have done with the character that I wanted to do that we didn't get a chance to do because Infinite originally had like. I think th- I think there was like 30 pages of the script that we didn't end up touching. We just kind of changed the story for the sake of uh, simplicity. Um, so I kind of morphed that and some more ideas into The Great Escape, that's the name of it. And it's really just a redemption story of this guy who was led down a really bad path in life because there was no censorship, which is my character, and uh, he's trying to kind of make amends with everyone he's wrong done you know I mean he killed Jared in the movie Lucas you know his best friend you know and uh, I know that I do have it set up right now so your character is in it which like I said that's not to say that he's alive but he definitely left an impact on Joey I would say yeah how did you feel about Infinite were you I I didn't really know what was going on when we were filming it (laughs) I don't think anyone did (laughs) But um, I, 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 I seen. I thought it was pretty de- good when I watched it. I watched. I binge watched it all. Like all. Oh, episodes. did you watch all of them? I watched all of them know, at the same time. I know a lot of people that only got to like part two, and then they were like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's not bad, but you know, I'll finish watching it later." And then they just never finished it, which is, I mean, yeah, it's understandable. You know, it's not like I'm a huge name, but you know, and I really did like hearing all the people that saw. I, I know that um, me and Jared agree on this. Parts one and four are me and Jared's favorite. And I know a lot of people commented us for parts one and four. They said that that's when it got like, you know, it had its peaks in terms of uh, overall story, which I think really speaks and says something. Because uh, if you go back and you watch it, part one is when I kind of, uh, 
I got the most collaborative with other people. Like that's when I let the most uh, interaction with the actors actually affect how I was taking the story, you know, in these directions. Because yeah. we filmed it out of order, obviously. And I remember Seth and Brett were in part one, and you know, they really pushed for their characters to be zany and weird. And part four was, uh, I you know, it's it's often said that it's easier to do a story towards the end than it is the beginning because you've already established everything, so you're just kind of taking these already established things and throwing them at the wall. And that's, I think, what made part four better. Um, <clears throat> you were there when we did the newspaper, weren't you? Um, what's that one? What? The newspaper. We were in the newspaper. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Yeah, right? I yeah. wasn't in the picture, though. Oh, yeah, Jared that's did, right. Jared did let me be in the picture. I, I, don't, I don't see why not, but... I don't know that, but it all happened so fast. The whole newspaper thing. I know like we were. We went out to the Mexican yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yep, we yeah. We went out to the Mexican restaurant. I know there was a lot of stuff going on, and I think Jared and I's lives at that point. We were, you know, it was like, oh my god, today. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can make it today, but I'll, you know, it's like I have to. Like, this is insane. So it was really rushed. Um, I'm assuming that's the only reason you probably didn't make it to the picture. It was probably too late or something. So I remember it was late and it was cold that night. It was very cold. Um, I I just thought Jared was like stressed and he didn't mind. I mean, didn't want me in there. I was like, eh, okay. Yeah, I, I know he was really stressed around that time period. Um, and it was in the paper though. So yeah, you you were. They they uh, asked you a question. I don't remember the question they asked you. Um, I think it was like, well, was it like working with the other people or something like that? Oh yeah, something. I got one. I got a clipping around here somewhere, but I'm not gonna dig it out right now. But how did you think that was? Like the interview was the whole idea of being in the newspaper, <laughs> I, something like that. It like, was, I it was pretty cool. I, I was not expecting that turnout. Uh, you know, I mean, I was in the newspaper like when I was born and a few times like through my uh, adolescence. But you know, for for hearing that, you know, like you know, at age eighteen, someone being like, "Oh yeah, we want you in the newspaper for like something that you just did this last year." It's like what? That's that was nuts. I was like not expecting that at all. You know, I remember it. Uh, it took me a while to get to the point where I can hang it up on the wall because I'm very uh, uh, self-critical. I don't like what I've done. You know, but it, it it took a while, but I got to the point where I was like, "That's badass!" Like I, I'm in the newspaper for, you know, working so hard and trying to you know establish and actually succeed in my dreams. Yeah. And I'm glad you were there. I think yeah. you know. Um, you know, I think I think the fact that you were there is one of the reasons why I asked you to be in this new movie because you kind of were experienced and you were in the first one and I wanted to continue a lot of the collaborations. How do you feel about this new one? Don't forget we can't say too much because but, nobody yeah. really knows. But how I, do you honestly, feel about I think this one's probably going to be better than, like, in terms, agree. like, better than the other one. Maybe not story, but, like, maybe Definitely acting. quality and yeah. acting, yeah. Uh, I think we're a lot more prepared with this one. Uh, I do agree with you. I think the story isn't as uh, articulate, which I kind of did to a degree on purpose because, you know, with Infinite, I feel like that story had so many layers of, uh, you know, structure. Oh, like other things going on. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, hidden messages and stuff with Infinite. Yeah. So with this one, it was like... I wanted to simplify it, and Zach Delfs was kind of on my ass about stuff being too serious, and, you know, um, uh, Trump had just gotten impeached, and I'm, I don't want, I didn't want it to be political at any point, like, biased, I you know, so. yeah, I do too, you, nobody can talk rationally about it, everybody gets, you know, Oops, like yeah, upset. yeah, people will throw a fit if their opinion isn't the one that other people agree with, so, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want this to be you know, a middle finger to any specific party or me saying you're wrong and I'm right and this is why. I just wanted to make it so... Just a movie. Yeah, just a fun movie with, you know, a good message. I think it's a good message, you know, kind of understand that there's multiple layers to a person. I think that's, uh, you know, what, what I was intending with the candidate in this film. You know, she's kind of ditzy, but she's not bad at what she does, but she's still, you know, not the best. Yeah. But in the end, you know... Uh, you, you know, so I'm glad to hear that you're excited for it. I'm very excited for it. Um, you're also producing it, and you're doing the special effects for it. Has producing it been stressful for you at all? I, I That's really, just the same thing. <laughs> I don't really think so. <clears throat> but 
I hope I it doesn't th- get stressful. I don't think it will, but I think that uh, that since I was in Infinite, it like the fact that you said I would be a, mm. I you would let me know if I if you wanted me to be in a later thing. Um, that it kind of like got me into the interest in like movie business, like like being interested in like acting and stuff like that. Like especially oh, really? when we did the. Uh, uh, we did marching band last year. We did the Avengers Infinity War, and like at like whenever I watch any uh, Marvel movie, I can like I hear the music. I pay attention to the music more than any, yeah, more than the actual yeah. movie. <clears throat> Which it, oh you you go yeah, on. and I I just it just kind of got me going, and then I'm like so at first uh, I asked Jared I'm like hey could I be the makeup and then but. He met Lainey, and Lainey does her own tattoos. Yep, I'm like, yeah. okay, so she gets it no matter what. I don't, I suck compared to her. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Why don't I do the physical, make, like, why don't I do the physical thing? So yeah, I, try, yep. I decided that I wanted to try to make it props. And I just like the, like, I just enjoy the thought of, like, having, like, m- like monstrous hands. Yeah. Like, because I, horror is, like, my favorite genre. Oh, yeah, same here. I, I try to crank out one horror a year. So that one that I sent you the plot of, we will hammer that out yeah. this year. It will be a little later because we have to wait for the corn. Uh, big, big. Yeah, to get big, big corn, big, big. But we will, <laughs> but we will, we will make it. Um, we were actually supposed to make that last year, but it never worked out. I think it just winter kicked our ass. It came way too early. It did. You know, and I I know at that point I was going through a lot of uh, drinking, <laughs> which. You know, definitely slows a man down, you know. So uh, I'm glad to say that this year I'm on top of it a lot more. Um, I'm glad that you're excited to be a producer. And I do want to say, I agree with you wholly, that you are very talented with the uh, physical effects. Jared's very talented with the practical effects, I would say. Like, you like you can go off the walls crazy being like, this is a monster hand. Or, you know, you I, it wouldn't surprise me if you walked in and, you know, you were like, Hey guys, I did uh, a physical rendering of my skull, and when you push this button in the back of the head, you know, a fist comes out, or when you push in the ears, you know, yeah, it explodes, and then Jared, I feel like, would be the one to step in and be like, well, a fist wouldn't actually come out like that, or would the head actually explode in that direction? Yeah. Yeah. And then you got Lainey, who's very good with the... Like, makeup? Vi- visual makeup, yeah. yeah. She's very good with that. And so I think I think what we need to do is get all three of you on board with the same film and just go absolutely crazy, because I do think it would be really fun and insane. Right now, I'm not working on... So I have four films in production. This is the first of four. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> um, they're, they're, the first two, this one and the next one, are fairly easy. The next two are... Uh, go, I'm very excited for them. I do think they're probably going to be 10, 20 years from now considered my peak. Um, but I do want to make a main horror film. When that day does come, you, Lainey, and Jared are definitely going to be involved. I don't know the story to pursue, so I might have to get your help with a story, which we shouldn't talk about on this too much, but I'm just getting ahead of myself. <laughs> What yeah. what I like about this podcast is it's not really as much sitting down and you know question and answers. It's yeah. more just having a natural conversation uh, with a notebook, giving us guidelines of where we can maybe discuss. Yeah. And my phone is in the way of that right now, so I don't really have a topic to veer off into. But uh, I just moved my phone, and now I'm trying to catch up with where I was in the paper. And I think I'm about to the point that I want to be at. Would you like to discuss the basics of I Give It a Year? That's the name of the second movie, by the way. Oh, I don't know if I ever okay. stated that. Uh, the name of the second movie is I Give It a Year. <clears throat> well. What it, would be considered the basics? Cheesecake. Yeah, cheesecake. The major hint. Major hint. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if, if, uh, you know, if, if you really want to know what this film is driven off of, cheesecake. cheesecake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a big one. Um, I know that we just sat down and we came up with a prop list and a location list. Did you know, reading the script, that there's only about, I want to say, like, 32 scenes in this? Seems like it would be more, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. honestly. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wrote it so that we could make it as simple and easy as possible, but unlike Infinite, which I also did the same thing with, I wanted it to be a lot more free-roaming. So with Infinite, it was like, oh, I need Jared, Emmett, myself, you know, and yada, yada, and yada, yada, all in the same scene. 
well, yada yada can't make it, and yada yada can't make it, and it leaves Jared and Emmett and me, and Emmett's waking up late, you know, this time I wanted it to be, like, real easy, like, the most people I think occur in a scene altogether are four, I think. I believe so. Yeah, because at times you'll have myself, you, uh, Ethan, and Skylar, at times you'll have you, myself, uh, the, yeah, David, and the, uh, I think that might be it. And then at times, I know it's me, uh, I mean, you, Ethan, Inglewood, and Skyler, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I don't want to go too, uh, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves with uh, um, releasing who's involved with the film. But I can say that I am playing a character that's in about three scenes. Skylar Nair, uh, she hasn't, I don't think she's been in any films of ours yet. I don't but think so. She's been in... Oh, she was in Infinite. She did a cameo for a voiceover in Infinite. Oh, voiceover. Other than that, she has not been in anything, but she's working very hard with us. She's also going to be in a few episodes of Chapters, Atrocity Exhibitions, which we are filming here soon. Um, she... So this is like her first big project with us. By the way, you are also in some episodes of Chapters, Atrocity Exhibitions. Uh, That's the web series we're working on alongside this film. Okay. I'll send you the plots later. Uh, they're real easy, you know. Uh, stuff you can get into, I'm sure. You, I mean, you don't have to. I don't want to. That probably sounded like I was holding a gun at him. <laughs> but I mean, I was, I was just thinking, you know. I think, I think you'd vibe with a lot of them. So I'm sure that you'll probably say yes and do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I like to make it sound like I'm holding people hostage when I do these <laughs> podcasts. It's the new form of radio, I hear. <laughs> Kids don't really listen to radio, so why would they listen to podcasts? That's what I thought, but the numbers are quite up there. I'm assuming what happens is the kids play Wheels on the Bus, and after Wheels on the Bus gets done on SoundCloud, ours is up next. <laughs> and it works well. Uh, we're pulling in great numbers. We're getting great Yelp reviews. Uh, I heard that we were uh, uh, nominated for a Grammy, which I didn't know podcast could be nominated for Grammys, but we're nominated for like 17. That's one in each category. I don't know. I'm just bullshitting at this point. Um, what was I going to say after that? We've already went over a majority of that paper, and we usually try to make the podcast last about 50 minutes, but I don't want it to seem too unnatural. So I'm trying to think of something. Ah, there we go. There's something on the paper we have not covered yet. So we talked briefly about an idea that you had in a location that you had in mind, and I said something along the lines of, I really like the concept that you're giving me. What if we turned it into a story? How would you feel about that being your first film? Do you intend to have a first film? Um. Whether it's short or long or both, would you like to make a film, essentially? I, I, I could do it. Um. Depends on, like, what time of the year, but yeah, I could probably do it, no problem. Yeah. Would you ever get into editing for a film? I, I, I don't know about that. I'm not good with computers. <laughs> that's, see, that's crazy. I always thought you would be the type to grow up and be really good with computers, but instead you're more the physical uh, alterings of things. Because you're even an FOC, aren't you? Or FTC? Yeah, robotics. <laughs> FOC. I'm in robotics, but all, I'm literally only a builder. Oh, okay. But still, don't you know? Don't self depreciate. That's still a lot for what it is. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're only 15. When I was 15, I think uh, the only club I was in at the end of school was running around the school with game cards, throwing them at one another, trying to hit each other, and <laughs> jumping on top of the school roof, uh, going on a dirt road, and uh, you know. 65 and a Mini Cooper, <laughs> you know, doing stupid stuff. Uh, that was just, you know, looking back at it seemed uh, fun and cool at the time, but now it's like... It's stupid. <laughs> yeah, like you were an idiot, man. Uh, yeah, screaming ostrich farms at the top of my lawns outside of the school. I don't know if you ever experienced me during that phase. Uh, 16 was crazy. <laughs> um, you're also probably going to be in my third film, which, once again, I don't want to sound like a hostage, like I'm holding a gun at you, but um, I thought you might like that also. So I'm going to uh, send you the plot of that right away and see if you uh, can vibe with that at all. Okay. Is there anything specific, without revealing too much, that you are super excited for before I give it a year? I get to eat <clears throat> a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, that is that is going to be fun. And when we wrap, that will be the main course that we celebrate with is cheesecake. Cheesecake and nice, 
nice vodka. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think you're. I think you agree to it. You're also probably going to be the person that does a little questionnaire with me at the end of the movie, like when the movie oh, releases. Okay. So you're just going to be asking me some basic cues, and I'm going to be giving some pretty simplified A's, and uh, we're going to see kind of where that goes. Uh, one thing that uh, Zach and I wanted to try with these podcasts, Zach Delves helps a lot with the podcast, but he hasn't been on one in a while. Um, I love you, Zach. That's not a diss. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we try to do ads, and I am stuck right now. I cannot think of an ad, so I'm just kind of looking around Coke the room. Zero. Coke Zero? <laughs> yes. I've never heard of that. I thought it was Pepsi Zero. Oh, I guess that too. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's got to be something good. Something good. Uh, well, this is going to air, uh, I'm not sure how long after it, but I know that currently today is, what is it, the 17th of February on a Monday? I believe it is. Yeah. Okay, today is the 17th of February on a Monday. That is Monday, February the 17th. Better Call Saul is airing the 20... Shit. I think it's starting on the Sunday, the Sunday, the 22nd of February that is a Sunday. Maybe it's the 23rd of February that is a Monday, and then episode two is airing the next day, whether it's episode one on a Sunday or a Monday. Episode two would be a Monday or a Tuesday, depending on when the first episode is, actually. But this podcast will not air until long after that episode, and the second episode, and maybe even the third, and maybe even the fourth, and possibly even the fifth episode have aired, so I'm wasting my breath with this advertisement. That is an advertisement that has failed. This is why I'm not... In this is uh, la, 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 la. it's been a long day. I have not been drinking. This is why I am not in improv. Um, I'm looking at the paper and I I'm seeing that. that it's pretty bare. <laughs> and we still have at least I would say I, I would like to try for at least twenty minutes. Oh, so, I got a question. So oh. you said I had given you an idea, like something about my first film. So what? what I don't remember exactly what that idea was. It's, it was a long time ago that I suggested that to you. Oh, that was just like last week. Oh, I, I don't remember because I have <laughs> uh, trash memory. It was memory. it was when he, it was when you were sending me those videos of that abandoned area. Oh, the yeah, uh, yeah. the the mm. old school. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's not it's not so much that you were giving me the idea yourself. I was just. It's that I was seeing the creative juices working in your head, and the creative juices spoke to me when I was. You, yeah, <laughs> juicy fruit. There's the advertisement, <laughs> juicy fruit, and the creative juices kind of. Uh, spoke to me and made me reflect on when I was about your age and everything that I did that was like that I wanted to turn into a film and you were giving you know you were you were giving me your ideas and the whole time I was just you know literally what I was thinking when I was getting those videos was perfect like just run with it you know like let's just do it you know and I know that sounds very hippie of me very stoner of me but I'm not a hippie or a stoner I have been at different points in life but now I'm not <laughs> but, dark times <laughs> dark times but it was just it was just like literally the way you were describing it to me and sending me those videos I was like the only thing we have to do is get you know the time get the people get the ship prepared and get a camera over there and hit go and then edit it after that so there is actually more to it that it, I made it sound like there was initially when I started that sentence but you know, it, it's like, that's all we essentially have to do is just get that all going, and then, boom, released. Like, it sounds to me like you got that pretty well under wraps. You have a very clear vision. And the whole point of Live Free, I've mentioned this many times, and I will mention it again until the day I die. The whole point of Live Free is not because I want to rush people or be like, hey, you know, you said you wanted to make music. I'm going to help you release that music. Where's that music? That's not the point at all, and the point at all is not for me to, you know, you know, chastise and be like, oh, come on, Dylan, you said that you might want to help me with my third movie. What the fuck, man? Why can't you help me with it? If, if I send you something and it, you don't vibe with it, you don't like it, just tell me, you know? If you still want to help with it, but not in the aspect that I wanted you to help with it, whether it's a bigger aspect that you want to shoot for or a smaller aspect, I'm almost always going to be like, yeah, no, you know, of course, you know, no problem. The way I see it, when you come up with a creative, you know, uh, outline, whether it's a book or a novel, that's the same thing. I just said uh, synonyms for the same fucking thing. Whether it's a book or a movie or a web series or a music, you know, a song, music, a music, a song, you know, uh, get as many people up in that bitch as you can, you know, respectively speaking, pardon my French, you know, it's like... Uh, <laughs> 
French word. That's the second advertisement of the night. French word. Um, <laughs> toaster strudel. Now we're just going to ASMR, which we've done that in this podcast once before. <laughs> I think Mercedes would be extremely proud of us if we just did this. Toaster strudel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're filling out the 20 minutes. But, <laughs> um... <clears throat> Shit, where was I going with this? I don't remember. It was a huge tangent that I was real passionate about. Oh, yeah. It's like when you buy a nice car. Don't just be like, oh, I'm not going to get my friend to ride in the car because he's going to spill his fucking Coke Zero everywhere. <laughs> like, just give your fucking friend a ride in the car. Enjoy the life with your friend because you only get this one life. If you don't enjoy it with your friend right now, what's the point? You're not enjoying it with your friend, you could die tomorrow. And then you haven't enjoyed life with your friend up until this point, and you died the next day without enjoying the prior day with your friend. So that's the way I see art. So life sucks. <laughs> yeah, it, it's in, in a sense. <laughs> but this is my way of trying to make it suck less. You know, yeah. if you if you got an idea and you know you want me to help with it, I'll almost uh, yeah I'll help anyone. But um, with something artistic, I won't help you commit murder. I've been asked that too many times. But if you need help with something artistic, <laughs> but, if you need, but if you need help with something artistic, definitely ask me and I will, you know, I'm almost always going to run in there like, uh, you know, the way Kanye West does into church services every Sunday screaming, you know, I think I'm the reincarnated God, you know, he's a very weird creature, Kanye West is. I don't know how that's you card, that. That's probably yeah. explains why he's a card to get humanity a lot. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, he's so out there. I really hope, no matter how, you know how uh, how selfish I get, or you know how how hard life hits me. I really hope that I do not become Kanye West. <laughs> did, did you hear about what happened at like the Oscars? Uh, Amy Schumer decided <coughs> that she was gonna like. Uh, pl like fall on the floor in front of Kanye West. He, he, he looked at her and then just stood there for a second and then walked away <laughs> on camera. <laughs> she, she, in the background as he's walking away, she's going like that I, on the floor. I could see him definitely doing that. Oh, he's such a weird character. See, how would, how would you act if you became super rich and famous? Now we're getting insightful. Now we're walking away from the realism of the podcast and we're getting insightful. How would you act if you owned 12 goats? 12 goats? And 10 of them needed to be milked right now. That's where you say, first off, milks, milk does not come from a goat. That's Depends on what kind of goat you're talking about. Okay, now, now, you're, <laughs> now you're just one-upping me. And it's excruciating. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you were to become extremely famous off of artistry, would you... Would you become Kanye West, or would you become more of like a Matt Damon? I just kind of disappear. I mean, kind Matt Damon. Mix, kind Matt. of a mix. Like <laughs> when I'm there, I'm Kanye, but when I'm like not, I'm, and then I'm just like not there. It's just I'm off. You're, off just, the mode you're describing Charlie Sheen. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that's so the much only, cocaine. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only good in between from Matt Damon to Kanye West is Charlie Sheen. That's what I've figured out in my 20 years of life. <laughs> I had to stop because I'm so used to saying, oh, I'm 19 years old. Because for a whole year, people asked me how old I was when I was 19. That was at least two months ago. Now I'm 20. No, no. That was, I, for some reason, I thought we were in March. Because Christ that's I'm when we old. released this. Christ is old. No, Christ, I'm old. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you mean? You're only I 15. I don't feel 15. I feel much older oh, than that. I f yeah, I, you, you seem older than that. Like, when you said 15, I was like, what? I thought you were at least, like... 25. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But, you know, I, I definitely feel older than 20. I feel like I've accomplished a lot more uh, than I intended to at 20, you know. Like, um, definitely was not intending to get away with the murder of Jimmy Hoffa at 20, you know. Definitely was not intending to create Apple by the age of 20 or, you know, find time traveling. A lot of people tell me that I have a really bad memory and that I like to make things up and I get the reality mixed with uh, the creativeness. I don't think that's true. I think 
I did create Apple, and I think Steve Jobs tried to steal it from me, which resulted in me... His cancer. <laughs> yeah, his cancer was one thing, but it also resulted in me suing the Winklevi twins. Winklevi. Winklevoss, but together they make Winklevi. Kind of like fungi. You, you just put an eye. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with this podcast? <laughs> uh, this is how it gets quite often. We often go off the rails. If, if I had... Okay, originally my idea for the podcast was to call it... Uh, what was it? Zykes. I mix Zach and Mike. But if I had if if I had any creative say, I would probably call it off the rails with Mike Barkoff or something of the sort. Uh, Zach, I think intends to come back to the podcast, but I don't know. I know he's got a very busy schedule, and you can't be mad at a man for that, unless you're Charlie Sheen. Then you can be mad at a man for anyone, uh, whether he stole your cocaine or didn't steal your cocaine. You can be mad at a man for anyone if you're Charlie Sheen, because you're Charlie Sheen. You have the right to be mad at a man if you're Charlie Sheen. But if you are not Charlie Sheen, which I am not Charlie Sheen, and you are not Charlie Sheen, then we cannot be mad at any man, including Zach, because we are not Charlie Sheen, and he is not Charlie Sheen. So there's no reason for a basic man to be mad at someone unless they are, in fact, Charlie Sheen. Question. Yeah. Where are you going with this? <laughs> Where am I going with this? <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. <laughs> you know the phrase bee's knees? I've been thinking about it lately, and bee's knees are not actually existing things. They are fragments for our imagination used to describe something good because oh. bees don't actually have knees. Not to my knowledge. So when you say something like this podcast is the bee's mm -hmm. knees, you're essentially saying that the podcast is non-existent. And when you're saying that the podcast is non-existent, that really is not only hurting my feelings, also my stance, also my importance. And my self-esteem. Yeah, my fear, <laughs> my self-esteem, all of that. It's really just hurting all of that. And I don't like it, so stop calling my fucking podcast bee's knees. Good news is nobody has ever called this podcast bee's knees. And I know what you're thinking right now. You are thinking... Why criticize Ben? <laughs> you're, th you're thinking... What? <laughs> I'm, I'm you're, going nuts. <laughs> you're, 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 thinking, you're thinking, how much cocaine did he snort before he met with me? Uh, none. The answer is none, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, I can be very sporadic and erratic. No, I did not say erotic, you pervert. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I can, sometimes I'll go on these really weird tangents. I think that's why Zach separated himself from this podcast. He got tired of it. Um, he, I think, I think, I think how I went with that is he sat down for one and he just heard me open my mouth right away. It was like, and, shut the fuck up. Yeah, I think, I think it was something really stupid and Zach was just like, and instantly I think he just face palmed and he was like, what are we doing right now? That's probably, uh, that's, that's the summary of my whole artistic career, though, I would say, you know. Alright, so we had a little interruption and we had to pause the microphone real quick. Um, so I think we are a little bit back on track, and that actually helped because we were essentially going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> now we are kind of at a rush, so this episode will not be an hour, like, our usual episodes are, or close to an hour, or a little over an hour, like our usual episodes are, it'll be a bit shorter. Okay. Um, but it has been awesome talking with you. Do you think we have enough time to reveal the plot of the movie? Um, or should I, we save that for... I think we might... I think we could probably save it. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think that actually wouldn't hurt. I'm thinking maybe we reveal the plot of the movie when it finishes filming. We film, we film a video and we release it that day. And kind of like... Uh, and then release the... Maybe the trailer like a month after, like or maybe the trailer a month after the oh a month yeah. after then so, uh, so release the movie. What? <laughs> no. So I'm th I'm thinking when we wrap filming, yeah. we do a video on the set the day we wrap filming, and it's you and I because you're producing it and you've been such a good help, and we just announce the plot of the movie, release that, and then maybe kind of make a trailer. Yeah, make a trailer after that, maybe a uh, week or a month or so. Yeah, and then and release then the movie. start building up to the movie. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, cuz the movie I want to come out in November. I guess that's one thing we can reveal about the movie. Uh I want to stop I want to be done filming ideally in March, which we talked about. So, hopefully that's how it goes. Um I'm glad that we can agree on that. Uh it's been awesome having you here. I know that you have to rush off, so we'll try to close this off. Uh, thanks for being on the podcast, and I hope you come back by again. I hope I didn't scare you off. 
Or I'll come back. Oh, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a life. Yeah, I know. Same here. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good, man. Uh, have a good one. Thanks again. And peace out.